Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, my YouTube channel, The Teaching Show. Please like and subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for more updates. So in this video, we are going to address some problems on thermodynamics. I am assuming that you all know some of the basic fundamentals of thermodynamics. Uh, for example, you, um, I just assume that you are familiar with what is first law, what is second law of thermodynamics, how you apply first law to an open system and a closed system. So uh, in this video, I am just focusing on the uh, some numerical problems on thermodynamics. So let's just get started right away. So I have taken first problem on a Carnot refrigeration cycle. It is using refrigerant 134A as the working fluid. Now, uh, as you know, a Carnot cycle, it is composed of uh, two reversible adiabatics which alternate with two reversible isotherms. So, the refrigerant, we are saying that it changes from saturated vapor at state 2 to saturated liquid at state 3 uh, in a condenser which is maintained uh, at a temperature of 60 degrees centigrade. So, it has been asked to draw a TS diagram of the cycle along with the saturation curve and you have to show all the four state points on the diagram. The evaporator pressure is further mentioned that it is maintained at 140 kilopascals and you are asked to find the coefficient of performance, the amount of heat absorbed from the refrigerated space which is nothing but the evaporator which is maintained at 140 kilopascal and the network output of the cycle and the network input in the cycle okay so let's see one by one okay so on a ts diagram a carnot cycle it looks something like this it has two reversible adiabatics which are shown by the um, vertical lines from process one to two it is a reversible adiabatic compression and also uh, your process from 3 to 4 it is a reversible adiabatic expansion the process 2 to 3 since it is taking place at a constant temperature this is a reversible isothermal compression and the process from 4 to 1 is a reversible isothermal expansion so it's very easy to draw a ts cycle on um, a carnot cycle on a ts diagram so essentially it consists of two verticals which correspond to constant entropy. So let's understand why these um, reversible adiabatic processes, uh, they are uh, vertical lines. So we know from Clash's uh, equation that uh, ds is equal to dq by t. So in an adiabatic process, since there is no heat exchange, so dq is equal to 0. So for a reversible adiabatic process, ds is also equal to 0. So no en uh, entropy is changing in a um, reversible adiabatic process so from 1 to 2 you have entropy change which is 0 and also from 3 to 4 you have entropy change which is again 0 the entropy is only changing from 2 to 3 where qh amount of heat is rejected and um, entropy is again changing uh, from 4 to 1 when ql amount of heat is absorbed in the evaporator section okay so this is how your cycle looks on a ds diagram now uh, uh, it has been given that your um, condenser is maintained at 60 degree centigrade so what's happening you are taking your refrigerant refrigerant at point 1 you are compressing it in a compressor from 1 to 2 it is undergoing adiabatic uh, reversible adiabatic compression okay then from 2 to 3 it is undergoing a uh, reversible isothermal uh, compression whereby whatever the heat which is generated during this compression it is rejected uh, to the uh, high temperature source which is maintained at 60 degree centigrade okay so your high temperature reservoir is at 60 degree centigrade then uh, from 3 to 4 uh, your refrigerant it is expanding and again from 4 to 1 it is expanding okay then it is expanding uh, from 4 to 1 it is uh, absorbing QL amount of heat from the evaporator which is nothing but the refrigerated space okay now this evaporator it is kept at a pressure of 140 kilopascals so the temperature is not given of the evaporator but the pressure at which it is maintained is given 
so uh, we have to understand that from for point 4 to point 1 what is happening is nothing but your uh, saturated liquid which is at point 4 it is absorbing heat and is getting converted into saturated vapor so essentially the whole of this process is taking place at a constant temperature uh, and that temperature it corresponds to the saturation temperature for a pressure 140 kilopascal so what you have to do is in order to find out the temperature we will go to the property table for refrigerant 134a and locate the pressure 140 kilopascal on this and then corresponding it to it we will find out what is the saturation temperature so we read saturation temperature is minus 18.8 degree which comes out to be 254.2 kelvin okay so now in order to calculate cop or the coefficient of performance we know the simple formula is 1 upon th by tl minus 1 putting the temperature of the high uh, high temperature reservoir and uh, of that of the low temperature reservoir you get 1 upon th by tl minus 1 is equal to 3.227 so uh, answer 1 uh, part 1 you have calculated what is the coefficient of performance that is 3.227 next it has been asked what is the amount of heat which is absorbed from the refrigerated space so you have to find the amount which is absorbed that is ql okay so first uh, we have to find out then what is qh because we know this relation that qh by ql is equal to th by tl for a carnot cycle okay in order to find out qh we have to find out the enthalpy difference h2 minus h3 okay so once again we will see the problem statement the refrigerant changes from saturated vapor that is state 2 to saturated liquid which is state 3 so you want uh, essentially your um, refrigerant is saturated vapor at point 2 and it is undergoing compression and forming saturated uh, liquid at uh, point 3 okay so going back again to your property table for refrigerated uh, for refrigerant 134a and we will find out uh, because this is taking place at 60 degree centigrade so we will again locate where is 60 degree here it is so uh, over here we will go and read the enthalpy of the saturated gas and saturated liquid from this table and which will give us the value of h2 and h3 now qh will simply be a difference of these two which comes out to be 139.1 kilojoules per kg once we know qh we can calculate ql which comes out to be 106.2 kilojoules per kg okay so we have now ql uh, which is the heat which is absorbed in the evaporator section that is what was asked the amount of heat which is absorbed from the refrigerated space next it has been asked what is the network input okay uh, it's very clear that because this is a refrigeration cycle you have to do certain amount of work in order to extract heat from a low temperature reservoir and reject it to a high temperature reservoir so you have to do some work so what we will do is that for the overall cycle we will apply first law that is equal to um, delta u is equal to q plus w okay delta q plus delta w since we are returning back to the same point so the change in delta u will be equal to zero so what we get is basically w in that is equal to qh minus ql so the work done is 32.9 kilojoules per kg okay so first problem we have done let's go to second problem now second problem is um, throttling of air now we have to consider air to be an ideal gas so let's just quickly understand what do we mean by throttling so throttling is nothing but uh, what we do in throttling process is that we put a constriction in the pipe okay so uh, assume that this whatever this red block this is a constriction in the pipe and a fluid is flowing through this pipe the downstream pressure p2 is always maintained at a pressure okay which is less than the upstream pressure p1 so p2 is always less than p1 when the fluid is flowing through this constriction um, we have to uh, okay let's find out what what will happen so let's apply energy balance to the system okay since there is no change in elevation and uh, also we will neglect any kinetic energy changes so what you get is that delta u is equal to q plus w now what is q in this case 
no sorry this is a open system throttling process so we will have your first law which uh, takes the form delta h is equal to q plus w now since this is a throttling valve which is very small in dimension so we will assume that the heat lost or heat exchange with the surrounding is uh, nearly zero so q is zero since there is no work which is being done so we will assume so uh, what will happen is that your first law as applied to an open system it will become delta h is equal to zero that means h2 minus h1 that is upstream minus downstream so h2 minus h1 is equal to zero from there we get that h1 is equal to h2 so for a throttle valve um, your h1 is equal to h2 that is there is no change in enthalpy so this is essentially an isenthalpic process now for an ideal gas your uh, enthalpy is a function only of temperature so if your enthalpy is remaining constant then what does it mean it means that the upstream temperature is the same as the downstream temperature if uh, it was not an ideal gas then what we will see is that the downstream temperature is lower than the upstream temperature usually when you throttle a gas uh, which has a uh, joule thomson coefficient which is less than zero then you get a cooling of the gas okay that we will study some time some other time but right now for an for an ideal gas it is straightforward that your enthalpy will not change uh, for a throttling process and uh, this will directly result in a constant temperature okay so your t2 is equal to t1 now in this question it has been given that the entropy increases by 0.87 kilojoules per kilomole kelvin and we have to determine the ratio of the pressures at the inlet and the outlet so we are asked to find out what is the uh, what is p1 by p2 okay so let's write down uh, first of all the equation uh, so dh we know so for this whole process dh is equal to 0 let's write down dh in terms of some other quantities so we know that h is equal to u plus pv so i can write dh is equal to du plus dpv du again i can write down as uh, q plus w uh, from uh, Clausius equality we have that uh, dq by t is equal to ds or we can write dq is equal to tds so from there i am writing dq reversible as tds we know that w is equal to minus ptv again then i am opening this bracket and i am writing uh, d uh, of pv that is equal to pdv plus vdp now this PD, pdv and minus pdv term they cancel and what i am left with is dh is equal to tds plus vdp but h is not changing so dh is equal to zero so i just write tds is equal to minus vdp now uh, since we have been asked to assume that your air is an ideal gas so i am putting ideal gas equation so instead of writing v by t i'm just using ideal gas to write v by t as r by p okay now i'm integrating this uh, from 1 to 2 so what i get is s2 minus s1 that is the change in the entropy delta s is equal to minus r ln p2 by p1 or if i absorb the negative sign i can write p1 by p2 Again, I am just rearranging this equation and writing P1 by P2 is equal to exponent of delta S by R. R is your universal gas constant, which is 8.314. So, putting the value of delta S and R, I get the answer as P1 by P2 is equal to 1.11. Okay. So, I hope you like uh, you, you like this video and it you, helped you. So, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.